Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Wireless microphones provide so many great features and benefits. For musicians and vocalists, basically you're cutting the cord with a wireless mic or instrument transmitter, and it's, it's a game changer. But getting the best performance from a wireless rig takes some knowledge and experience. Let's talk about five common wireless problems musicians and live sound engineers face and some solutions to those problems. The first wireless problem we want to discuss is channel coordination. Now there are a couple different aspects to this. First, you want to choose an appropriate channel for your location, and a big part of this is avoiding local TV channels. And in this case, local means a radius about 50 or 60 miles. So it's quite a ways around. Now, if you're inside a building that's blocking some of those transmissions, you might get away with 30 or 40 mile radius, but you're safest with 50 or 60 miles. So that's the first thing. Line up your channels, be sure your transmitters and your receivers are on the same channel, and avoid those TV channels in your local region. Now next, you want to avoid what's called frequency crowding. This can create what are called ghost frequencies and intermodulation distortion from multiple devices on nearby channels. You want to be sure that your devices are at least 2 MHz or more up or down from each other to avoid those intermodulation problems. That'll give you much clearer connections. The second problem, and actually one of the most common problems you can have with wireless systems, are dropouts, where basically there are dead spots in the, uh, in the wireless field that you're working in. And typically, this is caused by multipath interference. If you're an audio person, you can think of multipath interference sort of as phase cancellation. You have multiple paths between the transmitter and the receiver. Transmitters and receivers send wireless basically in a straight line. And if there are multiple paths, say directly from the transmitter to the receiver, from the transmitter to a wall back to the receiver, and so on, you get those cancellations, and that can create dropouts. Now, one thing that will help with this is diversity antennas, using two antennas. Because they're in different locations, they're going to sense different parts of the wireless stream, and you can avoid some of those multipath interference patterns. But proper setup is essential. You want to make sure those diversity antennas are at least a quarter wavelength apart, which is about 5 inches at 600 megahertz. A half wave or a full wave apart are even better, up to about 20 inches is where you start to see diminishing returns after that. The other thing you want to make sure of is that you have proper angle on your antennas. Typically, you want those antennas angled away from one another. You want to make sure your antennas are placed line of sight, nothing between the transmitter and the receiver. And a better antenna, or a more directional, or sometimes omnidirectional antenna, can really help. For example, we've got the RF Venue D-Fin here, and the D-Omni. These are directional and omnidirectional antennas, and they can really help in situations where you need to get the antenna placed for better reception and avoid multipath interference. The third problem we can face with wireless devices is another type of interference, which results in noise and static. Now, the first thing you want to do if you're having noise and static problems is to ensure that you're on clean channels with your transmitter and your receiver. Next, you'll want to turn off any devices that are close to the receiver because they can create noise that gets picked up. And that includes cell phones, which can cause problems in certain frequency ranges. With wireless packs, if you've got a whip antenna like this, if you bend that antenna or it gets stuck into a pocket, that can cause static and noise problems as well. A better antenna can help you isolate receptions, which reduces noise and static problems, things that are very directional. Again, like the RF venue antennas can be a big help. And also, check for proper gain setup. If the gain's too high, you'll get distortion. And if it's too low, you'll get poor signal to noise and reduce performance. Number four on our list of common problems is signal blockage. As I mentioned, wireless transmits in a straight line between the transmitter and the receiver. And anything between the receiver and the transmitter can actually block that transmission. That includes metal, wood, concrete, and other materials. But one we don't often think about is the human body. It can also absorb wireless signals and cause signal blockage. A big help with this, again, is a better antenna that's placed carefully. Whether a directional antenna or an omnidirectional antenna, it can really help prevent signal blockage. One that we don't often think about with wireless problems is actually battery problems. Dead or weak batteries or dirty or insecure terminals for the batteries can actually cause a variety of different problems. And that's one of the first things I check when I'm troubleshooting. I check the battery strength, check that the battery is making good contact. The second thing I'll check is my antennas. Is the transmitter antenna bent? The placement for my other antennas and so on. I've got a bonus for you as well, and that's operator error. Now, with operator error, this may not be the engineer, but it might be the performer doing things like accidentally muting or unmuting their transmitter. That can be just as big a problem in certain situations. You can also accidentally power off some transmitters, which obviously causes problems. Check if your wireless mics can lock the power switch so this doesn't inadvertently happen. I hope you found this discussion of five plus one extra common wireless problems and their solutions to be useful. We've really just touched on this topic. If you have questions or need more information, your first stop should be either Sweetwater.com or better yet, your Sweetwater sales engineer. They'll be happy to use their expertise and experience to help you solve any wireless or other gear problems quickly and easily. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Sweetwater.